the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Amen. In the church, we follow a three-year lectionary. We call them years A, B, and C. And the reason for this was our church leaders decades ago wanted the church, us, to read the lectionary actually every single day. And the feeling was after three years, if you did this, you would have read through most of scripture. Well, I'm telling you this because for the last four or five weeks, we have heard similar readings from the Gospel of John about the bread of life. And all of a sudden, we have now made this grand shift to Mark. And when that happens, and it does happen more than once in the church, I find that I often ask myself, did those who gather decades ago and make the decisions about the lectionary have a sense of humor? For these last five weeks, we have heard the most loving gospel readings about Jesus as the bread of life, Jesus and the love he has for us, the sacrifice he made for us. And now we've made this sharp turn to the Gospel of Mark. And now we hear Jesus talking about things that will defile us, not just our body, but defile our heart. Today's reading from the Gospel is a bit harsh. So I thought a lot and I prayed about this sermon and I'm going to ask you to just hang in here with me for a couple of minutes because I think, I think I may have found a little bit of light. I've said this before, I've never kept it a secret that I don't like to cook. In fact, I don't really know how to cook very well. I mean, the bottom line is I don't enjoy it, so I never do it. And I was talking to a neighbor the other day, actually it was a few weeks ago, and she had made something wonderful, and I asked her for the recipe, and I said, I'm going to try this. And I followed it step by step. I measured everything. I did exactly what it told me to do. But when it was done, it didn't taste so good. It didn't taste at all the way hers tasted. And I was like, I didn't even know what I did wrong. And I went over and I totally bemoaned the whole thing to her and said, I don't know what I did wrong. And she said, you are missing the most important ingredient, the love. You don't have the love. And she's right, I don't have the love. I've never had the love for cooking. Part of also what is missing is I don't even have any trust or faith that I can do it. I have absolutely zero faith when it comes to my cooking. And for some reason, I was thinking about this all week when I was reading this gospel. And I began to realize that there are times when reading scripture can often feel like you're following a recipe. Some of us are better at it than others, but it doesn't keep everyone from having a seat at the dinner table. When I look at a recipe, I immediately get overwhelmed and I think, I just can't do this. <coughs> and then I say, there has to be an easier way. Can't I get this already prepared somewhere? Do I really need to do every single thing that it says on the list? I try to avoid it as much as possible. Again, I have no faith. I have no love. I don't even attempt to do it. The more difficult the recipe, the more I don't want to do it. I don't see it as a challenge. Rather, I see it as an obstacle that I would rather avoid. So I just walk away. I think that we often do that with parts of scripture that don't make us feel so good. We decide, well, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this part. Let's talk about this instead. Because we don't want to hear those uncomfortable words. It's so much easier to stick with the parts that just make us feel better. My mother never went to the doctor. She used to say to me, if I go to the doctor, he's going to tell me there's something wrong. So she just didn't go. She felt it made her life so much easier to just ignore any problems certainly not acknowledge that there might be something really wrong. So self-diagnosis was about as far as she would go with her own health. Well, you know, the disciples and Jesus have been together now for quite a while. And along the way, they have had to decide, 
how far are we going to go with Jesus? How far are we going to go with all of this? And that is our struggle with discipleship. How far are we going to go? Are we in it for the long haul? Or do we just want the easier, softer ways? It's like going to the doctor. Sometimes, sometimes, we have to hear things we don't want to hear. I mean, it's much easier for me to just go buy a ready-made chicken to actually cook than actually cook one. It's an easy choice to make. I think we'll all agree there is always a back door to things. But Jesus is reminding his disciples in this gospel, I know it's hard, but if you stick with me, we can conquer things. We can conquer anything together. But there's a catch. First, we have to admit that we need Jesus. Just as some of us may need help with all sorts of other things. Or maybe we do need help getting ourselves to the doctor or being with each other when we're in trouble. Sometimes we meet, need help making that hard call and that difficult decision. Or perhaps we're dealing with really grand things that are just creating so much anger and, and hate and they're beginning to infect and defile who we are. There are those times where we have to take the hard look within ourselves. Because I think we'll all agree, sooner or later, all those things end up catching up with us. There are those times where we cannot walk away. That for whatever reason, we have no choice. We have to ask for help the times when we have to go to the doctor, the times when we finally have to say to ourselves, I'm going to have to ask for forgiveness or I'm going to have to forgive. Those times where we say to ourselves, I just can't do life on my own. I need help. That's the little bit of light that I found. Because that is the part of us that Jesus is talking to today. What Jesus is saying when he uses this word defile, what he's saying is what is it in our life that separates us from God? That is the only thing that will infect and defile our hearts. That which takes us away from God. Basically, that's the definition of sin. What separates us from God? Henry Nouwen wrote a wonderful example of this. He said, from the beginning of my life, there have been two worlds that have been speaking to me. One said, Henry, make sure you make it on your own. Be sure you become an independent person. Be sure I can be proud of you. And then there's been this other voice saying to him, Henry, whatever you're going to do, even if you don't do anything very interesting in the eyes of the world, be sure you stay too close to the heart of Jesus. Be sure you stay close to the love of God. That is what Jesus is addressing in this difficult gospel. Don't make the choices that will separate you from my heart. For when we do that, it moves us away from Jesus and we allow other things to get in and infect and defile our hearts. Scripture has to be taken as a whole canon. It would be wonderful if we could just pull out those pieces that make us feel good. But my prayer for days like this is when we hear difficult words from Jesus, we make ourselves listen. And when we listen, it's okay to turn around and say, what does this mean? The answer will always be Jesus is speaking to our hearts, telling us do not allow yourselves 
to turn away from God. No matter what we face in our lives, whether we see it as a sin or a challenge, whatever we may get into our heart that pulls us away from Jesus, we remember that there's a way back. Jesus will always meet us where we are. While there are those things that infect and defile our hearts, Jesus' heart is big enough for forgiveness. So if Jesus can forgive us, we have to ask for help to forgive ourselves so that we can move on and return to the heart of Christ. So to answer my earlier question, did the lectionary writers have a sense of humor? I don't really know. But I do know they had a purpose to reveal to us the truth that Jesus came to preach love, forgiveness, acceptance, passion, and hope. But we can't just leave it there. We have to look at the hard parts. We have to look at the hard parts and remind ourselves God is in our hearts in those wonderful places and he's also there in the uncomfortable places. For if our heart stays open to God, while it may be tempted to turn away for whatever reason, we hang in there and we stick with it because we know that knowing that a heart full of the love of God is a heart led by the love and grace of Jesus Christ. And holding on to that truth, no matter how bad we may feel, if we face them with Jesus and keeping the heart of God, nothing, nothing can defile that love. It's taken me 32 years as a priest to find this really small light in these difficult words from Mark. But thanks to God, unlike cooking, I've never given up on searching for that light. Amen.